church. It's time for children's church once again. I'm glad you can join us. We've got a we've got a few kids with us today, and we're going to have a good time learning about Jesus. But before we do, let's go ahead and start with a word of prayer and ask Jesus to bless this time. Father, we thank you. We thank you that your word is always available to us. We thank you that you're always teaching us. And we thank you, Lord, that we are able to have the technology to record our services, to record our children's church, that we might send it out over the internet. Lord, we ask you that you might end this, uh, this virus, this sickness, quickly, so that we might all come back and join together again in the house of God. Now, everything that we do today, may it be for your, uh, for your honor, for your glory. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's lesson is going to be about Balaam and Balak. Now, wait a minute. Who, who's Balaam and Balak? Well, they're going to be a couple of guys. What happened to Israel? Oh, this is, going to, this is going to deal with Israel, too. But you see, Israel came out of Egypt. So Israel came out of Egypt. There we go. And they wandered in the wilderness, and God did many miracles for them. God fed them. God made sure that they had plenty of water because they were out in the desert. God made sure that their clothes didn't wear away. And God uh, defeated the enemies that came against them. And finally, they came up, if you remember, up to the land of Canaan, which was the promised land. Now, God had given them the Ten Commandments. God had given them all the laws. And they came up to the land of Canaan, and God said, send out the spies, and they did. And God intended for them to go in and take the land at that time, but the people weren't ready yet. They weren't ready to obey God yet, and they got afraid. They saw the people, and they saw they were giant people, and they got afraid, and God said, I can't, I can't do this then. If you, won't, if you won't obey me, if you won't trust me, then there's nothing I can do for you. Go ahead and you're going to wander in the wilderness. And they had to wander for 40 years until all the people that were grown-ups at the time died away. They all died in the wilderness except for two men. One was Joshua and the other was Caleb because they were the two spies that trusted God. And they believed God. And that pleased God. God said that they would be able to go into the promised land. Now at this time, they came, they came down and... and they had many other trials, and they had to deal with their sins, and they came. They dealt with other nations. They came around to the nation of Edom. Now, Edom was distant relatives of theirs, so they didn't want to go through and try to conquer Edom. Instead, they wanted to just go around, but the king said, nope, you're not even going to do that. We're going to come out and fight you. And so God defeated them. And all sorts of nations came up against Israel, and they, they tried to stop Israel. But you see, God was with them, and God was able to have the victory every time. And the people began to become afraid of Israel, because every nation that went out against Israel lost. Israel won every battle that they fought in. And finally, they were coming up near, and, and this is almost, the 40 years of wandering was almost done, and everybody, had, everybody who was a grown-up at the time that they were to go into Canaan had already died except for Moses and uh, Joshua and Caleb. And everybody else had either been children or had not been born yet. But they had learned in this time to trust in God. And so they knew that God was with them. And they came around to a country called Moab. The country was called Moab. And like Edom, Moab was again distant relatives. And so they weren't going to conquer Moab. They didn't want anything to do with Moab. They, they just wanted to leave them alone because they were family too. And the king of Moab was afraid though. He saw them coming and he was afraid. Oh my goodness, here comes this nation. And they've just run over everybody that's gotten in their way. And now they're coming to my borders. And what am I going to do? What am I going to do? He said, I know what I'm going to do. I know this magician. I know this sorcerer. 
His name is Balaam. So Balak was the king of Moab, and Balaam was a, was a uh, sorcerer. He did not worship God. He didn't worship God. And yet he knew who God was, though, and sometimes God would talk to him. And so, Balaam's, uh, so Balaam was well-respected as a sorcerer, and they, they said, well, you know, everything that Balaam says comes true. So Balak says, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to hire Balaam, and I'm going to have him curse the Israelites. Do you guys know what, do you know what it means to, to curse somebody? Who knows, who knows what it means to curse somebody? Go ahead and tell me um, if you know. Like you say bad words to them? Uh, sort of. It's close. Like you put something on them and it like happens to them? You wish a bad thing on them. So yeah, it is kind of bad words. It's not swearing or anything like that. But you're, you're saying, you know, I hope something bad happens to you. That's putting a curse on somebody. And so Balak, the king of Moab, thought that if Balaam put a curse on Israel, that they would stumble and that Balak and the Moabites could beat them in a fight. And so he sent his men to, to uh, Balaam. And he said, Balaam, I need you to do something for me. I need you to come. And I, there's this group of people called Israel. And they, they've been running over everybody, and I don't think I can beat them. But if you come and you curse them for me, then I believe I might be able to beat them. Would you do it? Would you come? I'll give you great honor. And so they came, the men came to Balaam's house. And Balaam said, well, why don't you stay with me tonight? And I'm going to go talk to God. And I'm going to see what God says about it. And he did. He talked to God. And God said, no, don't go. These are my people. Israel is my, they're my special people. And I have determined that I want to bless them. Do not go and do not curse them. And so the next morning, Balaam gets up and he says to the men, I'm sorry, you're going to have to go back to King Balak because there's nothing I can do for you. I am not, God says, do not uh, curse them. And so he sent them away and they went back to the King Balak. And Balak says, I've got to get him to curse them. I'll tell you what, guys, go back to his house and promise him I'm going to give him great rewards. I will do anything that he wants, and I will make his name great in the nation of Moab if he'll just do this thing for me. And so, and take him gifts too. Take him a lot of gifts. Take him a lot of gold. Take him a lot of silver. There's a lot that you can buy with gold and silver, right? And so they would have made him a rich man. And so they went back to Balaam's house. And he said, Balaam, King Balak is He's prepared to make you a rich man. He's prepared to make you famous. He'll give you anything you want if you'll just curse Israel. And Balaam said, well, I need to go talk to God. Again, why don't you stay here the night and I will talk to God. And whatever he tells me, that's what I'm going to do. Now, here's the thing. He went to God and he said... Do I curse these people? Do I go with them? And God said, here's what I want you to do. If they come to you in the morning, then get up and go with them. But only say what I say. Only say the things that I teach you, that I tell you. But here's what happened. What was, what was uh, his instructions? His instructions were, if the men come, and if they come and get you, then get up. Here's what Balaam did, though. He didn't wait for them to come. He got up in the morning, and he got his donkey ready. No. I am Balaam, and this is my donkey. Say hello, donkey. Hello, donkey. And so Balaam saddled up his donkey, and off he went. 
What happened though? Uh, he didn't wait, right? He didn't wait. He didn't wait for what God told him to do. What did God tell him? To wait. To wait if, if what happens? If they come. If they come, go with them, but only say. He didn't wait for them to come. He got up, he sat up his donkey, hello donkey, and off he went. And as he's riding, you see God had other plans. God put, and if you would imagine this, God put an angel standing over there in Balaam's way. And the angel had a sword in his hand. And it was a flaming sword. It was a sword of fire. And as soon as Balaam got there, God was going to kill him because he disobeyed God. But you see, the donkey saw the angel. Balaam couldn't see the angel, but the donkey did. And as Balaam's riding along, and the donkey sees the angel, and the donkey also takes off. And Balaam starts saying, whoa, whoa, stupid donkey, stupid donkey. Where are you going? Where are you going? And he got the donkey back on the path. And as he's going with the donkey, and there's that angel still in the way. And I got my little stick all bent out of shape here now. And the donkey still saw the angel. And he didn't want anything bad to happen to Balaam. So it says that he went and leaned against the wall. Bam! And he crushed Balaam's foot against the wall. Balaam, stupid donkey, stupid donkey, what are you doing? And he got him back. And then all of a sudden, because the donkey still sees the angel there, and they're getting closer. And the donkey just lays down and wouldn't get up again. Now, donkeys are kind of heavy, aren't they? You're not going to be able to pick up a donkey. And Phelan got mad. Stupid donkey, stupid donkey, stupid donkey. And he's beating the thing with his stick. It's all mashed up now. And guess what happened next? The donkey began to talk. He said, Balaam, why are you beating me? Now, who's, who's got pets? Who's got pets? What's your pet's name? Um, Guka. Guka? Choya. Okay. So let's say you're playing with Guka and Choya, and all of a sudden they start talking to you. What's your reaction going to be? Uh, <coughs> shocked. Shocked? I'd be freaking out, okay? If my donkey started talking to me, I'd go, whoa, wait a minute, donkeys don't talk. But you know, Balaam was so angry. He didn't even stop to think, hey, my donkey's talking to me. He said, if, I'm, if I had something in my hand that I could kill you with, I'd kill you right now. I am so angry at you. And the donkey opened his mouth up again. He said, have I ever done anything like this before? And Balaam's still not, hey, wait a minute, I got a donkey talking to me. And he answers him again. He said, no. And it was at that time, God opened up Balaam's eyes, and he saw the angel. Oh, my goodness. There's that angel ready to kill him. And the Bible says that Balaam bowed his head. He got, he got off the donkey, and he bowed his head, and he bowed down onto the ground, and he worshiped God because he understood his donkey had done him a big favor. Balaam would have been dead if his donkey hadn't seen that angel and uh, took every step possible to keep Balaam from getting killed. Balaam realized that all of a sudden. And finally he said, okay, God, you got my attention. What do you need me to do? And God said, go ahead with the men, but do not speak anything 
other than what I tell you. And so Balaam got back on his donkey and he went. Nice donkey. And so Balaam went before the king. He went before King Balak. And Balak says to him, what took you so long? Where you been? I've sent for you twice now. How come, why, why didn't you come to me? Don't you understand I'm the king? I can give you riches. I can make you wealthy. I can, I can make you famous. I'll give you anything you want if you do what I ask you to. And Balaam said, look, I take my directions from God. I can only do what God tells me to do. Do you take your directions from anybody else beside God? You know, there are a lot of people that are trying to get you to do things. And sometimes there are things that God doesn't want you to do. But you see, we have directions from God. How do we know what those directions are? It's right here. It's right in the Bible. These are our directions from God. And what you see in here, what God tells us to do, that's what we need to do. But somebody might say to you, hey, look, you know, if you, if you just don't worry about the Bible, don't worry about the Bible. Just go ahead and, and you know, do, do this thing that I want you to do. Don't worry. Uh, yeah, I know the Bible says you shouldn't do it, but don't worry about that. I'll make you rich. I'll make you famous. <laughs> And let me tell you that there's going to be a lot of people that are willing to do that. That they'll make you rich and famous if you'll just turn your back on God and do something other than what he told you to do. But God says do not do that. Because that's disobedience to God. And disobedience leads to death. Balaam almost found that out, literally. If he had not, if his donkey hadn't acted on his behalf, Balaam would have been a dead man because he disobeyed God. And so finally, Balaam got it. He got it. He said, King, I can only do what God tells me to do. I can't do anything more. I can't do anything less. So Bal uh, Balak took him to a place where he could see Israel. So Balak took Balaam to a place where they could see Israel. It was a high place. And Balaam said to Balak, okay, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take seven oxen and build seven altars and sacrifice the oxen on the altars. Now I'm going to go, you stay here with the sacrifices and I'm going to go over a ways and I'm going to listen to see what God says. All right? And then I'll come back and I'll tell what God said to do. And so he did. So Balaam goes away. Here's the word of God. And then Balaam comes back. And he says to Balak, here's the word. Here's the word that God gave me. He says, rise up, Balak, and hear. Listen to me. Oh, that's the second prophecy. Let me go back to the first one. He says, he says, Balak, the king of Moab has brought me from the mountains of the east. Come, curse Jacob for me. Come, denounce Israel. But how can I curse the one that God has not cursed? I can't curse who God hasn't cursed. And how can I denounce those whom God has not denounced? Now, I can see. I can see this nation before me. Who can count them? Who can count them? Who can number them? Let me die the death of the righteous. And so what did he do? He blessed Israel. He was hired to curse Israel. Instead, he blessed them. And Balak says, what are you doing? I asked you to curse Israel, and you've just blessed them. That's not what I asked you to do. All right, all right, I'll tell you what. Let's, let's go over to another place where you could see them from another place. And he took them over to another place, and he said, Balaam said, okay, seven more oxen, seven more altars, and then I will go away, 
and I will hear the word of the Lord. And so Balak did what Balaam told him, and then Balaam went away, and he listened to the voice of the Lord, and then he came back. And he said, rise up, Balak, and hear. Listen to me. God is not a man that he should lie. Let me tell you that again. God is not a man that he should lie. God never lies. And so that's what Balaam was trying to tell Balak. Look, God told me to bless Israel. God's not lying. He's not going to change his mind here. And so, once again, he blessed. He said, he said, I've received a command to bless, and he's blessed, and I can't reverse it. He's not seeing wickedness in Israel. The Lord God is with him. God brings them out of Egypt, and he has strength like a wild ox. There's no, you can't curse Jacob. You can't curse Israel. You can't curse them, is what Balaam said. And so Balak is freaking out now. So that's twice. That's twice he asked Balaam to curse Israel. And twice Balaam has blessed Israel instead. And so now Balak is all flustered. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let, let, let's, let's go to another place where you can only just see a small part of them. And don't, don't, okay, you don't have to curse them, but don't bless them. And Balak said, or Balaam said, look, I'll do it. However, I can only speak what God tells me to speak. That's it. More or less, I can't go beyond the word of God. And so they went over to that third place. And Balaam, uh, Balaam told Balak, okay, seven more oxen, seven more altars, seven more sacrifices. But this time, he said, he the Bible says that he understood the will of God. And he didn't even go away this next time to seek God. Because he knew that God wanted to bless Israel. He said, how lovely are your tents, O Jacob, your dwellings, O Israel. He shall pour water from his buckets. His seed shall be in many waters. His king will be exalted. His kingdom will be exalted. He has strength. He'll consume the nations. He'll break their bones. He'll pierce them with his arrows. Blessed is he who blesses you. He's talking to Israel here. And cursed is he who curses you. And now Balak was furious. He said to Balaam, he said, I, you had a chance. I gave you three chances. And God seems to have withhold you from blessing. Now, leave me. Just go, get away from me. Get away, I don't want to see you anymore. Because you, you didn't bless, or you didn't curse Israel like I wanted you to. You blessed. And Balaam said, yes, I'll go. But here's something I want to tell you before. It says, I see him, but not now, which means not in this present time, but in the future. A star shall come out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. Now, do you know what a scepter is? A scepter is the staff that a king holds in his hand, and it's representative of the authority that a king has. In other words, Israel is going to be the authority. They are going to be the kings. And he'll batter the brow of Moab and destroy all the sons of Tumult. And then he gave a curse to other to other nations that would try to come against Israel. You see, God intended to bless Israel. God was with them. They were God's chosen people. And God would not stand for anybody who would try to do otherwise. There's two things that I want you to know. Number one is when God tells you something, you do it. You don't do anything more. You don't do anything less. You do exactly what God tells you to do. 
And if you do that, you'll be blessed. But if you don't do that, you will be in disobedience to God, and you'll suffer the consequences. That's the first thing. The second thing is, if God favors somebody, if God has it in his mind to bless somebody, you better bless them too. And God had it in his mind to bless Israel. And so the best thing for, uh, for Balak to do would have been to bless Israel. Fortunately, Balaam had that figured out. He finally, It took him almost dying, but he figured it out that he needed to bless Israel. You see, you don't try to curse the ones that God blesses, and you don't try to bless the ones that God curses. We must be in agreement with God. If God blesses somebody, we bless them too. If God curses somebody, we got to curse them too. Now, does that mean we don't love them? No, of course, because God always, even the people that God curses, he still loves them, and we love them too. But God is always right, and we are not. God is always, uh, he's always correct, and we are not. The only time that we are right is if we agree with God. That's the only time. And so that's what I want to leave you with this morning, is number one, Always ask God what to do. Always obey God. Always do what God wants you to do. And don't stray from it. Don't, if God says turn to the right, don't turn to the left, you turn to the right. If God says turn to the left, don't turn to the right, you turn to the left. You do exactly what God tells you to do, and you will be blessed. Always agree with God. And you will be blessed. And you'll be right. And you'll be righteous in the sight of God. I want to thank you for listening this morning. Now, I didn't get a chance to say this at the beginning of the lesson. But we are posting these videos on Life Church Kids. Now, if you're watching this on Life Church Kids, you already know this. But we also post it to our website. And for those of you who are watching this on the website and you're not a member of Life Church Kids, go ahead and please contact Miss Donna or Miss Karen or Miss Faith or myself. And we'll get you set up for Life, uh, for life Church Kids. There's some wonderful things on there. Uh, Miss Donna posts a lot of great things for kids, great resources. And also, uh, we have videos of our lesson each week that Miss Donna posts on the Life Church Kids uh, Facebook page. So go ahead and ask your parents to sign up for that, and there's going to be a lot of good stuff for you there. I want to thank you for listening. I want to thank you for being so attentive, and I ask that God bless you and God keep you. Until next time.